up, guys? I am here with Whitney B. Hampton, and we have another episode of Entrepreneur Enthusiast. Um, we got connected because she's a chief strategy officer for Sip and Savior, um, a dope coffee shop in Chicago. If you come here, you guys got to gotta come here. And when I looked into you, I looked into your background and saw you are an uh, entrepreneur coach, mm-hmm. and then you also are in real estate. So talk to me about your background and then how did you get into real estate? Absolutely. So again, Whitney B. Hampton, managing partner of Hampton Real Estate and Investments Development Mm -hmm. Group. I have a background in finance um, from DePaul University. Really got that degree because of my grandparents. Mm -hmm. So my grandparents were entrepreneurs for over 40 years. And so just as a child, I grew up in that family, yeah. of course, we worked in the family business, you nice. know, uh, eight, nine years old, running their offices. Man, that's the best school you can have. Literally, there, yeah. there's no better experience than that. And so I remember often going to like Chamber of Commerce meetings at wow. eight and nine years old. And every year there would be different businesses. And yeah. so I asked my grandfather, why do the businesses change every year, especially in our communities? Mm-hmm. And he said they don't understand finance. They don't understand how to get money or how to keep money. Yeah. They know how to make it, but they don't know how to keep it. Mm. And so I had said from a young child that I was going to go to school to learn business so that I could help black owned businesses in my community be sustainable. So that is why I went and got my degree. I was not sure how mm-hmm. I would be able to, to walk in that purpose. Um, And so in the interim, my family has been doing real estate for a number of years in terms of rehabs. And so one of a friend of ours said, Whitney, you always are coming up with these great ideas. I had pitched to them that we should do uh, record a reality TV show pilot and submit it to DIY Network. And so they said, well, you should be a real estate agent then. And so then you can represent us when we're doing these rehabs. So they said it. I, on the spot, looked up what it takes to be a real estate broker, signed up for the class the following week, took the class, passed the test the first time, had no intention of using the license outside of um, assisting them with that pilot. Yeah. I ended up, um, because I was still working in corporate America at the time, I was taking the Metro downtown the conductors Mm -hmm. you know they get to know you on the train every day and so i just in passing said yeah i got my real estate license and and so i'm gonna be shooting this pilot etc and one of the conductors asked me for my card and a month later said listen i have some cousins that are in the military live in la want to move back to chicago yeah never owned up any property that side of the family has never owned property but they want to own and i told them i'd like to connect them to you And so I kind of chuckled and said, did you tell them I've never done this before? (laughs) And he said, yes, but I trust your integrity with me. Um, And so ended up helping them with their first home. They ended up referring me to five of their family members. Oh, wow. So I sold all of them property. And that, I believed sparked me to say, this is how I can change our communities. Um, Because that first closing, they were so emotional, saying that they never thought this will be something that was possible in their family because they had never seen it. So you went from being a real estate agent Mm -hmm. um, to launching real estate company and investments after that. What, what kind of prompt that? Was it that, that attention you were getting or you were just like, go big or go home? So I've always been about ownership, right? Um, Again, coming, coming from the family and the, and the legacy that we came from, it's always been about owning. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to be able to do something that my, my kids could be proud of and that they could own. And so initially the company was actually called LKM, which was after my daughters. Um, And so eventually it did evolve into Hampton real estate and investments, but the pride that they had to yeah. say, you know, my mom owns this. Yeah. It was something very special to me. And so that's what it was. It was it's it's about legacy. No, nah, that's that's dope. Like and in about the legacy, how do you define generational wealth? And like how do you tell your customers that? Because you've gotten it because you've gotten it through your family. Mm-hmm. Your grandpa get put you on game, mm-hmm. you're putting your kids on game. Mm-hmm. But I can imagine other people don't even know what that is. Like how you define that for them? It's a great question. Uh, my grandmother recently passed, and someone said to me in um, on a Zoom meeting, 
talking about what's happening in Chicago with our youth and everything. They said, before we get started, just want to give our condolences to Whitney and also recognize that she is legacy. She is generational wealth. And a lot of times we attribute generational wealth to just money, mm -hmm. but it's not money. It's the values. It's the systems. Mm -hmm. It's the, um, it's what our families leave to us in terms of the imprint and the impact. Yeah. And so she said that to me and, and I told her, you know, it, it brought tears to my eyes because I do believe that that's what my grandparents define generational wealth with. Yeah. Um, and so that is how I've always tried to live my life. It's not about money. It's about making an impact. It's about changing lives. Yeah. And the money comes anyway, right? I tell yeah. people I don't chase money. I chase relationships. Because in the relationship, I'm able to not only operate in my purpose, but I'm able to impact, impact. lives. And so that is generational wealth to me. There, there's a, a lot of people don't understand the value of leaving legacy. Mm. Um, my mom passed in 2018 Sorry. and um, she's still with me every day yeah. because she left me the Physically, legacy. Yeah. Like, and not just the, the money side, but just all her, her ideas, her wisdom, her wisdom, yeah. her relationships, yes. like everything she left me and I wasn't left alone. Come on. There was a community left for me. And I think, and I have these talks with my family, my friends, because I have three kids now. Okay. And I look at my boys, and I'm like, man, y'all so lucky I'm setting this up for you. Listen, like, they, they, have no they have no idea like what I, you are establishing for them. Man. And, and, and the name that you leave them, right? I tell, <laughs> even when I went away to college, when I tell you that there has not been a place that I've traveled, that people have been to Chicago or from Chicago that they do not know the businesses that my yeah. grandparents created. Yeah. So even that is legacy, right? That I'm able to say, oh, I'm a Fisher grandchild yeah. and the doors that that opens. And so that is what I want to be able to leave to my kids, right? Is, Man. Oh, that's Winnie Hampton, child. That's Winnie B. Yeah, go I, ahead. And, I and, smiled at my, my son yesterday. He was like, I want to go back to Luckett Family Farms. Come on. And I'm like, he don't, he's three, so he don't even know his, mm -hmm. like, that's you. you did, yeah, I looked this, at this him, yours. I looked at him, I was like, this is Lucky Family Farms. Yeah. And he, he still don't understand, but, like, that. So what are, what are some common misconceptions people have about, like, ownership, home ownership, and just real estate investing? That is unachievable. Yeah. Especially in our community, I think people see it as this big, grandiose idea, um, some pie-in-the-sky type mm -hmm. of dream that only a few people can obtain. And the truth is, it's obtainable for us all. <laughs> it's actually our God-given right, yeah. right? God tells us in the Bible to possess the land, to have dominion. Mm -hmm. And so that is what we're called to do. Man, and, and so um, I think that's one of the greatest misconceptions. I think it's also that you need a lot of money to get yeah. started. I have a client um, that I recently got into a multi-unit building. And so prior to them closing, we had had a number of consultations. And as we're talking through what this process is going to look like, I'm explaining to them what the financial contribution will be. Yeah. And they literally said, wait, that's it? <laughs> yeah. And I said, yeah. Wow. We've been saving for five years. Yeah. Because we thought we needed at least $80,000. Yeah. And perfect credit. Yeah. And so imagine the thing about real estate is it's going to continue to appreciate. Mm -hmm. So there's never a bad time to get into real estate. What's bad is when you're waiting to get into real yeah. estate. So imagine what could have been obtained in those five years with just that education, just it's that information. Interesting you say that. So when my mom passed, that's the first thing I did was buy property. Mm -hmm. um, and so now I own three properties. And yeah. like I, I had like a 590 credit score. Mm -hmm. You know, I had debts and all that. But once I, like, paid my taxes up, like, and applied, you know, I was able to get the first property. I was like, okay, that that was cool. That was that was easy. And then the other property was commercial, and, and, and I did that through SBA, 10%. I'm like, okay, yep. that was easy. Yep. So then I got my third property, and I just said, And now it's addictive, right? Yeah. That's why I, I tell people, yeah. once you start, you never want to stop. I'm like, every year I want to do this. Because <laughs> yes. I literally, I call my, me and my mortgage broker, shout out, shout out to Josh. I talked to him. I'm like, what do I qualify for right now? Mm -hmm. But the problem is a lot of people in our community are even scared to just call the mortgage broker. They're to, scared to take a good look um, at their finances, right? Mm. Finance and money, credit, those are like four-letter words in our yeah. community. And here's the thing. No matter where you are right now, if you've got great credit, 
jump in the water. Yeah. If you don't have great credit, still jump in the water. And what yeah. does that mean? Your path may just be different from some for someone that has perfect credit or good credit, um, but you still have an opportunity to own. Yeah. It may mean doing the work in advance, right? And yeah. so that's part of our consultation is looking at what is your credit score like right now, connecting you with our team that will say, well, these are the things you need Absolutely. to do to get you where you want to be in terms of how much you want to be able to put down. People don't realize you can be qualified at a 580 credit score. Yep. Now, that may mean that you need to bring more money to the table. Yeah. But either way, you still can qualify and own property. So don't let anything deter you from that dream and right of ownership. Yeah, no, absolutely. And just like. Like you said, having that checkup and just knowing where you're at, and then even the ratios, like that's something I know is like, Your oh, debt to I don't really have no debt, so mm-hmm. my ratio is good. Absolutely. Like, so, I'm, I'm, so you may have worse credit with somebody. But your ratio is better than them, yep. so you can actually go. And get you have something. money saved. You yeah. have money in the bank. Listen, money talks. Money talks. <laughs> Are you still doing wealth building Wednesdays? So I am. Um, again, that's a weekly podcast that we do. It's taking a different shape. Yeah. I started wealth building Wednesday because. I know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so people always call, text, email me for referrals. Mm. And so someone one day randomly said, Winnie, it would be so dope if there was a way for you to get this information out to like a lot of people at one time. And so I said, oh, um, during the the, um, pandemic, I said, oh, I'll just go live every week. Yeah. And, and I'll just tell people about different businesses, entrepreneurs, and it just grew into something big. Yeah. I, I know a lot of, like, even the point of entrepreneurship, I've learned that uh, I, you can actually just buy a business. Mm-hmm. And I know it sounds like, like, some people's like, okay, but you can find a business already established and go buy the business with 10% down, yep. you know, and run the business. You know, you can buy yourself a job. How do you balance your your role now after that, because you own a business, you're mm-hmm. a public speaker, mm-hmm. you're a real estate agent, mm-hmm. you're a chief strategist. How do you balance your roles? Systems, mm. right? You have to be super organized. I am, anyone that knows me knows I am a stickler for organization. I'm probably yeah. OCD a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I write everything down. The first thing I do in the morning after I pray and work out is I'm going through my checklist. What yeah. needs to be done today? Who do I need to contact? And what entity is um, does that involve, right? Yeah. So if it's Sip and Saver related, okay, these are the people that I need to reach out to today. Mm-hmm. If it's real estate related, these are who, and I time block. Everything is, you know, Sip and Saver may be from eight to one. Yeah, Real estate, two to six. Um, I'm also the youth pastor at my church. So in ministry, whatever those things are, is time blocking, is managing, and then it's surrounding yourself with an excellent team, yeah. right? Everything requires teamwork. I yeah. am a firm believer in, I stay in my lane. Mm-hmm. So the things I do well, I do them. Those things that I do not, I hire people to Man. do them. I don't want to do your job. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do mine. Do you, do you have challenge with that, with uh, delegating? Or? I do not. Yeah. I, I am a, like literally... I, I don't want to do anything that I'm not good, not at. good at. Because here's my I'm, thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a disadvantage to those that we service. Yeah. If I cannot do this well, me even trying to learn it, that takes too it's much time, time when I can just hire someone that's good at it. And the funny thing is I've had that mindset set since I was a child. Yeah. When I was younger, my mother would try to teach me how to do hair. Um, she was an executive in corporate America, but also was well-versed in like braiding hair and, yeah. and just doing different hairstyles. And so she would always try to teach me that. And I said, listen, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. And she's like, but you need to know how to do it. Why? There are people that love it that I can pay to do it. To it. Yeah. And I was saying that to her at six and seven years old. And she would crack up at me. She's like, I know this child going to make money yeah. because she's already of the mind. Why would I learn how to do something that I don't like? That you don't like. When I can just pay people that are passionate about that thing yeah. and let them operate in their genius. True, true, true story. So my son is an incredible builder. He builds mm-hmm. these, at three years old, he builds these structures mm-hmm. with these wood blocks. And I'm like, this dude could build. And I could build too. I just don't have time for it. Mm-hmm. So on Easter weekend, you know, I got Good Friday off mm-hmm. and um, Jesus was a carpenter. Yes. So I call myself deciding that I'm going instead of buying our chicken coop, I'm going to build our chicken coop. Okay. 
And it went it went well. I got it to a certain level. Yes. I got I got the structure up in the walls and all that. My neighbor, who actually is a tradesman, came over and blessed me with five days of his work to okay. kind of fix what I did wrong yes, yes. and do things right. And I realized then, you know what, Joe? Like, and I'm already big on paying people to do stuff. Mm-hmm. But I was like, next time I decide I want to build something, I'm just, just going. We're just going to call the, 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 carpenter call the carpenter and let them do what they love. Let them do what they love. <laughs> like delegation is 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 a key. Absolutely. What what challenges have you faced as a woman of color in the industry you're in, and how have you overcome that? That is a great question. Um, I think. It's the same challenges that we as a community face in general. Yeah. It's people believing that you are who you say you are. Yeah. You are always having to prove who you are, um, always having to overachieve or overexert mm-hmm. in order to prove that you are worthy of the opportunities. Yeah. Um, I have overcome those challenges by being exactly who I am, right? right? I have always been a person of excellence. It has always been required in my family. Mm-hmm. And so I just show up all the time, on time, ready to work. And and um, that has really opened a lot of doors for me. The other thing is that I, I'm transparent. Yeah. I'm authentic. I, I am who I am every time I step into the room. And that resonates with people. Mm-hmm. And so people want to see you win. And I want to see other people win. And so all that does um, is get replicated. Yeah. No, that's that's a great answer. Um, and speaking of transparency, we're in a time right now where there's lo- low inventory. Mm. Um, it's funny when people tell me about it. It's, it's funny when people <laughs> tell me like there's no buyers because there's I know. Pretty, oh, no, there's plenty there's of buyers. buyers. Like there's millennial buyers that mm. need to get a bigger place right Absolutely. now. And like. I just expressed my real estate journey. I was blessed to buy in 2019. Mm-hmm. I was blessed to buy in, in in November, October before the interest rates mm-hmm. went up. Like I was good, and I kept hearing other people saying, "Well, the interest rates are going up, or this and that." Doesn't matter. Where do you Rent see real has estate? Hundred percent interest rate for the record. <laughs> Where, where do you where do you see real estate evolving over the next five years? And where do you what advice would you give to some millennials now looking to buy property? Buy, just buy. buy. Just buy. Yeah. Can I say it one more time? Just buy. Um, real estate is and for will, and will forever be a great way to invest your money. It is a retirement plan. Mm-hmm. We have not created this out of the blue. Think mm-hmm. about this. Real estate has been around since biblical times. Yeah. It will forever be around. They are going to all people will always need somewhere to live. Businesses will always need somewhere to sell. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's nothing that's going to change in terms of the importance and the necessity of real estate. What I would encourage young people or anyone that's interested in real estate to do is do your due diligence, educate yourself. And a lot of that means teaming up with professionals that you can trust. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to Google everything and, but the truth is, yeah. if it was that yeah. simple, and TikTok it. Ev- everyone would, would learn that way. Yeah. The truth is, the reason why you need a professional is that we shorten that that learning curve, yeah. right? So instead of you Googling for 20,000 hours a day, yeah. you can just come talk to me and I can answer every question that you have. I can connect you to the people to make what you need happen. Cause you got guys out there, and um, you know, no shade, but like Grant Cardone speaking, mm-hmm. talking about ten exit mm-hmm. and all this, and it's like, bro, I'm trying to one x right now. At least get that. Like, what is the start? What if I'm trying to buy a house? Because you and I know how I would say it's an easy process. Mm-hmm. It's more of a like a logistics thing. Mm-hmm. What is the process in the start of? Purchasing your first property, not like because I know you can buy a multifamily, single family, whatever, just buying a property. What is the start? What is the process? The first thing you want to do is know your own finances. Right. Mm-hmm. So how much money do you have saved in the bank? What are your FICO scores? Mm-hmm. Um, what are you wanting to do in real estate? Mm-hmm. If you have that, the next step is absolutely to connect with a real estate professional. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of the first things I'm going to talk to you about in a consultation. What are your goals? A lot of times people come to me and they say, oh, I want to buy a house, right? Because I need somewhere to live. When they're talking to me, I'm saying, do you ever plan to own multi-units? Do you want rentals? Yes. 
Okay, so let's do that first. Mm-hmm. Why do why should we do that first? Because there's an advantage, right? There's mm-hmm. a strategy associated with uh, purchasing multi-unit properties prior to purchasing a single family home. Mm-hmm. Down payment assistance money. Being able to have a low down payment. Typically on investment properties, you're having to put down 25%. Mm-hmm. But if you're purchasing those properties first, prior to owning a single family, you're now considered owner-occupant, Yep. FHA, you have a three and a half percent down um, down payment. Within a year, you can purchase another building, same down payment, yep. and you can keep doing that year over year over year. A lot of people don't know that, so having that consultation, connecting you with the professional, helps to guide what your plans already are. How how do you stay informed about the industry news and what's going on and what's out there? For for anyone to become in real estate, where do you get your game from? So I definitely um, social media reading, um, Crane's business, following all of the finance, CNBC finance, mm-hmm. um, the Wall Street Journal, reading all of those things, but also following those um, in real estate that are are. My inspiration, I call them, you know, my digital <laughs> mentors, right? Yeah. So following them and, and looking at the trends and, and taking master classes, mm-hmm. I don't care where you are positioned or what industry you're in, you never stop learning. I want you to go back on that because I'm big on paying for mentorship mm-hmm. and classes. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times entrepreneurs or just why they don't want to pay for someone to tell them, but it's like they've been there. So they can give me the They're game. They're shortening your learning curve. Yeah. And here, here's one thing I will say. I probably was of that mindset, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm very intelligent. I've, I've done a lot in terms of experience. I have the school, so the formal education. And so it's like, listen, I can figure out anything. But it goes back to why take yourself yeah. through this long process when there are people that have already, already done, done it, it that can give you the blueprint this past um december i made a decision i said you know what i am going to take some master classes yeah. join some mastermind groups and just see what the difference is and when i tell you exponential growth yeah right so um join two mastermind sessions and have been doing them for the last four months life changing yeah because it's not just about how to be better in your industry it's really about building the foundational principles to be a better person yep the things that you need or the skills that you need to be successful in business are really attributed to you being successful in life in general yep and and so i i highly encourage individuals if you want to go and you want to go to the top you have to bring and be around other people and not just people that want what you want, yeah. but the people that have already achieved what you want. What, what, let's put a number of value on that. Sure. What would you pay for that? In, invaluable. Invaluable. Yeah. And I, invaluable. I, I, and I say this, and I, I do want to make a point of this. There are, of course, individuals that are charging without value. Exactly. So you have to do your due diligence, mm-hmm. right? You have to to really pay attention and follow individuals and, and, and see what they've done and how long they've done it. And, mm-hmm. and are they actually doing what they're telling you to do? Yeah. Uh, but when you find those people, there is no limit to There's what no it's limit. worth. Because, again, this is what's going to allow you to surpass even your wildest dreams. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've paid my mentors mm-hmm. up to about 30000 Come on. For I'm telling you, there's, there's no... Yeah. It's invaluable. And and I, I would say the biggest thing I, I got from it is I made the money back just by mm-hmm. being in the room, mm-hmm. networking the with the people. The you know, relationships. People. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a, a big part of it, um, being able to do that. So with most of these, these business visuals you have, Tell me about a failure or setback that you've experienced that you've overcame. Burnout. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> you, got, you got two I daughters. Should, I have one daughter. One daughter. Um, I have two bonus babies. Yeah. And so uh, from a previous relationship. So it's absolutely burnout because yeah. you want to be everything to everyone. Yeah. And when you're not able to do that, it's almost, again, when you're a person of excellence and I'm an overachiever, you start to kind of sink. And yeah. so I've had those moments. But what I learned, organization, processes, and the mm-hmm. team. 
that allows you to overcome that. that that's that's a that's a recipe for success. Absolutely. Um, but how do you measure success in your work and personal life? Because you answer to your clients, really. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you measure your success? It's, it's multifaceted, right? Mm -hmm. Because real estate is always about numbers. Yeah. So there are there are actual goals and number goals that I, I want to hit and, and that I um, set every quarter. But then success for me is also balancing, right? Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the joy from my family and my friends. It's the personal growth. Yeah. It, it's, it's all of those things. And some of that cannot be a t um, measured in number. Yeah. But it's how do I feel every day, right? When I can wake up and I'm smiling and I'm happy and even when things are going bad, um, being able to, to feel peace and to feel joy, that's success to me. I love that. What last question? What's some advice you'll give to someone starting their entrepreneur journey, and what can you give them for doing that? What, what what's some advice you can give someone starting an entrepreneur journey? Um, I would definitely say research. Yeah. Right. And know you. And, and when I say research, is not just research in the industry, but really researching yourself. What's mm. your motivation? Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. I got into real estate because someone in introduced me to it, but I stayed in real estate because it fulfilled the, the purpose driven life that I wanted for mm -hmm. myself. I didn't get into it for money. Yeah. The money came anyway. So if your motivation is money, yeah. you got to be careful with that, right? Because all you worried about is a check. Yeah. And I see that. And to me, that's scary. Right. Because there's no limit to what you'll do. Yeah. So I think it's so important that you know why you're getting into entrepreneurship and then you stick to that. A lot of us get into entrepreneurship for freedom. Yeah. And then we lose sight of that. Right. Man. Because we work 80 hours a week. Yeah. Well, where's the freedom in that? Where's the balance in that? Where's the time? And so knowing what your motivation and your reason for what you're doing and then God allowing that to guide your decisions along yeah. the way. There, there are times where I personally... My son looks at me. My daughter looks at me. I'm like, you know what? Forget this job. Mm -hmm. And I, I know mm -hmm. it's going to impact me in the future. Yep. And I'm not going to get whatever check I was getting. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not going to get that contract. But that time with them is most important. It's priceless. Because I can't you don't get, get that back. back. You don't get it and back. Like, you can nah, always make a check. I can always make a check. But you can't get the time back. Man, man. That was that was awesome. And I appreciate you uh, being on the podcast. Thank you. With Miss Whitney B. Yes. Captain. <laughs> um, where can people find you? Absolutely. And, and shout out to you in Chicago, but tell people where they can find you at. Absolutely. So you can find me on Facebook, Whitney B. Hampton. You can find me on Instagram, Whitney Hampton underscore Realtor. You can um, always catch me in Sip and Saver. We have four locations, a couple more coming. Um, so you can always catch me in, in person at Sip and Saver. Catch her in person at Sip and Saver. Yes. Man, this was an awesome episode. And thank you. thank you for doing this. You guys that are tuning in to Entrepreneur Enthusiasts, there is no time but now to start your business. Go to the website, get your entrepreneur toolkit. Um, one thing we offer in the toolkit, so you know, is we have website hosting. Okay. We have social media management. We mm -hmm. have email marketing. We have text message marketing, missed call text back. Yes. We have appointment calendar and other things mixed in in our software for $97 a month Very cool. or nine ninety seven for the year. So if you're just getting started, you need those things Absolutely. Um, going. So check out our toolkit and thank you for coming on the episode. Thank and you. thank you guys for tuning in to the Entrepreneur Tuesdays. <laughs> Thank you.